to another episode of Fantastic Plastic with your host, Laszlo J. Luongo. Today we're going to be doing something that I see a lot of people uh, asking a lot of questions about and nobody really knows what's going on. We're going to be making mold material out of silicone caulk. Uh, I usually get 100%, well you have to make sure you get 100% silicone caulk. I usually get Red Devil silicone caulk only because it's one that I've used before and I know that it works. But just make sure that you get 100% silicone caulk and don't get GE silicone too. We'll probably work with that in a later episode and you can probably find some information online about working with it. But it works in a different way than, than just plain 100% silicone caulk. Really the only thing you need aside from the silicone caulk is this stuff, glycerin. Pure glycerin. You can get it at the grocery store. You can buy it in bulk off of the internet. It's a lot cheaper. I haven't done that yet only because usually I find that I need glycerin today or tomorrow because like, oh, I'm going to do something and I don't have the time to order it. So I go to the, the pharmacy and I just buy a bottle. This, the, the tube of caulk, usually run you about three to five dollars. And this, again, is about, you know, four to seven dollars. So you figure ten twelve dollars worth of stuff and you get a really decent amount of mold material what we're going to do today is we're going to mix these two ingredients with a couple of other things we're going to start off with just this and this and a little bit of food coloring for color because with food coloring it, we're going to get a nice we're going to get clear silicone which isn't necessary it's just a cool effect and we're also going to mix in some cornstarch. Cornstarch is a good thickener. It, it stiffens the, the final silicone up a bit uh, and we'll talk more about that when we get to the actual mixing in. Um, we're going to use some paint for color. Any acrylic paint will do. We're going to use some mineral spirits. We're going to try to thin, it, thin down a batch so that we can pour it. Uh, I've never gotten a batch that could actually be poured before so we're gonna we're gonna try that today with mineral spirits uh, I would highly suggest that you that you test a small batch of whatever material you're gonna be casting because mineral spirits will dissolve a lot of stuff and it'll dissolve wax too you know, we're gonna be making a mold in a later episode and we'll probably make a couple of molds in a later episode and one of the things that we're gonna do because I use I use wax almost exclusively is we're going to coat it with a thin brushed on coat of regular silicone before we pour this stuff in and that should keep it safe. Now this stuff is optional uh, but I highly recommend it. This is lemon oil you could probably find just citrus oil. This I found in the furniture polish section of my local grocery store after looking for it for about three years not knowing where to find it uh, I just I was buying something else one day and I was like oh there it is because what I had read on the internet is that you can thin silicone caulk with this stuff you can thin it down thin enough to pour and you can I did that the problem is that when you put too much of this in it th this doesn't dry so that's always there's always an oily surface and I didn't test to see how how that would affect casting materials I may at some point it may work like a like a natural mold release or it just may screw everything up so we're going to do a test of that in a, in a later episode but the reason why I swear by this stuff is because the thing that I found out is this stuff if you've ever used it before you know it just smells like vinegar like white vinegar and not like real white vinegar either like some weird chemical that kind of smells like white vinegar and it'll fill up your house if you've ever caulked your your bathroom or something you, you know it just it just fills up the house and the, you you can't you're smelling it for days this stuff a few drops of this stuff makes the caulk smell lemony fresh because this is acidic this is acidic uh, this completely covers the the silicone smell with just a few drops so I always use this I always add a little bit of this whenever I'm making silicone you can if you want to you don't have to but I highly recommend it alright so the first batch we're gonna make like I said is gonna be the nifty clear stuff and I've got my caulk already loaded into a caulk gun but the one thing I will say is you wanna invest in these little things caulk keepers 
they're only a couple of bucks and this one's been sitting for months in my workshop and I tested it before you just pull this cap off it's got this little thing that goes inside and it, it keeps it from solidifying in the tip uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna squirt a bunch in I'm only doing small batches because you know we're just this is just for to show you how it works take that off cap back on. Alright, to that wad of silicone I am going to add a few drops to start off with of glycerin. And I'm going to add a few drops of food coloring. Just one or two. One is good. That should be good. Right, I'm going to start to mix that in because otherwise it will run around. Okay. And I'm going to put just a drop or two of lemon oil. You just want to mix it up until it's a uniform color. And that should be good. Now as this stands you can just you could wipe this on or brush this on to a, to a mold to a piece that you're going to be molding. Uh, but I promised you guys that I would show you how to make a little putty out of this stuff that you could actually work with your hands. And if you notice, I'm not wearing rubber gloves. And the reason why I don't is because this is what I do. That's a little too sticky. So I'm going to mix in some more glycerin. That is still kind of sticky. But now, I'm going to take some glycerin and put it on my hands. Get them good and coated. And now I should be able to... You know, I can handle this without getting too much on me. If it starts to get sticky, you can just put some more glycerin on your hands. But that's really all you need. And with the glycerin mixed in and on your hands, if you do get some stuck on your hands, it just wipes off. And you can kind of model this like modeling clay or putty. I am going to find a place to put it right now. I'll just grab another cup and I'm going to just kind of smooge it on. And we will see what that is like after it sets. The next batch we're going to try is the pourable stuff. Hopefully the uh, mineral spirits won't eat through my plastic cup. We're going to put a nice blob into the cup. Oh, that smells. See, the more of it you use, the, the more it smells like vinegar. So just a quick drop or two of this stuff. And it's more or less lemony fresh. So we need a little bit of glycerin to catalyze it. I'll put six drops in. A little bit of paint. And one, two drops of paint. Now the way that this stuff works, it needs moisture in order to catalyze. And the glycerin and the paint both have moisture in them, so mixing them in thoroughly gets the, the moisture everywhere. So you don't have to put a thin layer on. This will all solidify. Now one problem with uh, thinning the silicone is that it's not going to be as stiff. It's going to be uh, rubbery. It's going to be a lot stretchier and it might tear a little easily. So I don't really recommend using this stuff as pourable, but you can feel free. And it's hard to integrate the mineral, mineral spirits at first, but once they bite in, it starts thinning up. Looks like we've almost achieved the pourable consistency. Almost. 
a little bit more. Need a little bit more of this because I can smell the vinegar. All right, let's see if that pours. Not really, not like pourable silicone. Let's go a little bit more because that looks like it's almost ready to pour. <clears throat> now mineral spirits, when you mix the mineral spirits in, the other thing that I don't like is that it, uh, it takes a while longer to cure because the mineral spirits have to evaporate. That looks like it will pour. And let's see if that, that is pourable. I am skeptical about what the final result of this is going to be, but we'll see. And it may take a couple of days before uh, this is set up enough to pull out of here. But you see it does settle. So that's interesting. Let's see if I can get the rest of this out. Alright, the last batch that I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch in. And cornstarch if you put too much cornstarch in, then when you try to wash the mold out, you get the mold wet, uh, it's going to start to disintegrate. So a good rule of thumb is about two parts caulk to one part cornstarch. A nice blob in here. Cornstarch is another way to get moisture in here, believe it or not. Cornstarch is a humectant, so cornstarch sucks moisture out of the air. So there's moisture in cornstarch. That should be good. A little bit more. That and some glycerin. One more, come on. There we go. A little bit of paint. A little bit of white paint. The paint is really more of an indicator than anything else. It tells you that you got a good consistent mix once the color is consistent. Just a little bit of that. And actually because the white paint is going to be almost indistinguishable from the cornstarch, I'll add just a drop of red. When I first started out, I just mixed in cornstarch and then put cornstarch on my hands. And that kind of worked, but like I said, because the, the, if you have too much cornstarch, you need enough silicone to absorb all of the cornstarch. Once you get too much cornstarch in there, then the cornstarch will be able to absorb water after the silicone sets. And we don't want that. But you can see, this already has a stiffer consistency than even the, the stuff that just had the, the glycerin and uh, food coloring. And again, I could do the same thing with this stuff. I won't, but I could just, you know, a little bit more glycerin and then coat my hands in glycerin and just play with this stuff. Just smooth it onto the mold, the, the piece that I'm making a mold out of. And that's pretty much how you mix it. You can experiment. You, if you want to like measure out all the different ingredients, it just really, I, it goes by feel though. As long as you have uh, really enough paint and silicone in there and you get it mixed, I mean, uh, and glycerin, paint and glycerin, you get it mixed to a, to a nice consistent color, there's enough moisture in there for this to all set. Also, if I, if I put it on with a stick, just to show you, if I put it on with a stick and then I put a little bit, like a drop or two of glycerin, on my finger, I can just smooth it by hand. Just get a nice coat of glycerin on top. So, like this, you can you don't use as much glycerin because I only have to put a drop on and move it around. Excuse me. 
and that's it. We'll come back when this stuff is, is all set and we'll see what it's like. This, these two will probably take two to three hours to set up, uh, give or take, depending on the humidity. This stuff is anybody's guess because the silicone has to set and then, like I said, the mineral spirits need to evaporate. So this stuff, it's whenever it stops smelling. But we're going to see what this stuff is like when the other two batches are done. And then if I have to follow up in another video, I'll follow up in another video. So I'll see you when they're set. Okay, we're back. This stuff is set up. It's been a little over an hour, I'd say. Uh, and it's, it's all set up. It's, it's all nice and solid. So come over here and take a look and I'll show you what we've got. So the way you can tell is if you just press on the stuff and it's, it's firm, it's set up. Now let's see what the different, what the different batches are like. This is the one that was just the glycerin and food coloring. And you can see it's pretty firm. It's a little stretchy, but pretty firm. Nice and smooth. This is the stuff that had the corn starch in it. It is a lot firmer. And see, cleanup is pretty easy. You can usually reuse your cups because you just peel the stuff right out. This stuff is a, is a lot firmer nice and stiff still got nice and smooth surface and you see it is a little stretchy and this stuff this was the pourable stuff and it's set up it's it's kinda soft it's very stretchy oops let me get that Get it out. It, this is about the texture of jello. And I have a feeling that I could tear this pretty easy. Oh, you get a good idea of what kind of detail you get. But I think I could tear this. And if I try really hard, I could tear it. But I can stretch. I can stretch right through it. It is very, very stretchy. So, it's up to you. If you want to try this, you can give it a shot. Just wait until, ah, oh, wait until it no longer stinks, and then you can use it for a mold. Okay, that's it for making silicone molds out of silicone caulk. If you like the video, hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. And don't forget, November is almost over, and I'm going to be doing another November... Well, I'm going to be doing my first monthly giveaway. Uh, I'm going to pick a couple of subscribers at random, send you a message, you send me an address, and I will send you a sampler pack of stuff that I've made, different sculpting waxes and maybe some sculpting tools, maybe some stuff I have laying around the, the workshop, I don't know, maybe some warbler, maybe some uh, polycaprolactone. It's a grab bag, so you got to subscribe to be in it. I'll see you next time on Fantastic Plastic. Sometimes I like to touch the silicone cough and then sniff my hands like this. Don't try that at home. Pink. The mood flying from Ghostbusters too. Yes. Yep. This is called, in the business, this is called Vanna Whiting. It's a wide. How, how close are you?